the Peace Awareness Labyrinth and Gardens, um, beautiful oasis in downtown Los Angeles, California. And I'm here today to welcome my guest, uh, actor, writer, producer, director, Jesus Garcia. Hi, Jesus. Welcome. I am here to ha here to have you here today. Excuse me. Because um, I want to talk to you about a new film you have called The Way Shower. And um, I, I want to know a little bit about The Way Shower and um, kind of give me some background about that. Well, um, this, we call it Prana, Peace, Awareness of Labyrinths and Gardens. Uh, <laughs> this home, it's, it was first built by. Uh, I think Budsby Berkeley lived here, and it was built by an Italian family. But the bottom line is, it was uh, the headquarters for MSIA, and John Roger uh, founded it. I'm just giving you a quick background. Good. I want Should that. I look at the camera here? You get away from the camera. They're part of our conversation. Yeah, I want to bring you in. That's right. Um, so basically, John Roger is who I work for, so there'll be no mystery there. And then we did a movie called Spiritual Warriors. And then I wanted to go deeper into, you know, his life and background and continue making movies. I'm an actor, so I've always wanted to direct, and he let me co-direct The Way Shower. <coughs> and that's what they've always called him, The Way Shower. Mm -hmm. So it's funny, her website was Way Shower, and so um, that's how we got to uh, meet. But I love the name because he never, he never related to himself as a guru or, or particularly a teacher but a way shower, one that shows the way. And so uh, I wanted to put myself in the movie, and it's kind of a quasi, it's about finding yourself through your spiritual teacher. And we go back to Helper, Utah, where John Roger was born. We actually do a lot of real life places that he went to, real life stories uh -huh. that he told. And we, you know, we kind of, meshed it together and made a story out of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a particularly great writer, but me and John Roger wrote it, and basically it's it's a lot of his oral stories of his life mm -hmm. recorded, and then we you know put it together mm -hmm. and made it into a movie with my issues and my problems of the, my separate, just A and B stories. And the, the, one of the key elements in the movie that I really wanted to uh, go off into was the separation of the selves. Oh, wow. The high, the conscious, and the basic. And psychology has its own thing, but I didn't mm -hmm. take psychology, so I really don't want to go into that area, but more into like what the way I've experienced it, the way I was taught through John Roger, the, the identification of the selves. And in that, you know, like Igmar Bergman's Persona and things like that, those mm -hmm. kinds of movies interested me. Uh, Hitchcock movies, and we tried like we tried to like kind of like how do we make a cinematic cool movie with some nice teachings, right? And it, and put Jr.'s story in there, mm -hmm. a guy from humble humble beginnings to mm -hmm. to a, a pretty powerful teacher, right? Boy right. So he he's the inspiration then for the film The Way Shower, yeah. Well, for sure. For yeah. sure. For sure. Um, you all, you both uh, wrote, directed, and produced the. It was kind of co-produced, co-written, and, and co-directed, right? The spiritual wars, or the, no, the, well, the um, wish yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. We wanted to totally control it, and okay. all of it was run by him, and, and he gave me quite a bit of reins. It was produced by Rick Ojeda and Dave Hinkins, his nephew, okay. and Lori Lerner, and it was all friends, mm -hmm. all all personal money, mm -hmm. very cheap. Right. I was going to ask you, how do you get from the idea of the way shower, you know, film, when that came about, <clears throat> the inspiration and the process that you took to get it to what's going to be happening on March 8th here in Los Angeles? You know what? I like to take all the credit. I, I give it all to spirit and God. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be taking a lot of credit for that. I, I, I believe, you know, if you read Joseph Campbell, if you read all these great people. You know, George Lucas, his mentor was Joseph Campbell. There's no doubt mm -hmm. Spielberg. We love to find out who his mentor is, but he did meet John Roger. I mean, there's a lot of people that inspire each other. Mm -hmm. And 
in that it's a universal inspiration. And too many people take too much credit and don't include others. Mm -hmm. I love to say I did it all. I'll tell you what I did, I drove the bus. Mm -hmm. But spirit, you know, allowed me and gave me direct, G spirit was my GPS. Awesome. And I was the bus driver. Mm -hmm. And everybody in the back was in, in cooperation with, and if you weren't, I just let you off the bus. Right. Did you have, I mean, you, I'm sure that all films have that, you know, there's, how do you like, how do you get you speak, all these people? You speak that I don't believe in filmmaking being a democracy. It, okay. It's a dictatorship. Okay. Right. Sorry. Well, it's yeah. your idea. Someone, it's your yeah. idea. I mean, when it comes to spirit and God and Christ, even uh, Judaism, which is the same thing to me, mm -hmm. all that, it's it's really a not a democratic thing. It's, it's like, it's that dude, that woman, they're the boss, and you either kind of do it that way, right. or you know what, you have freedom to choose. By, by the way, there's the there's the door. But this is where we're going. But this is where we're going. Right. And you Bus can't, that way. yeah, you can't have a bunch of rebels in the back going, come on, give us freedom. And we like, want well, there's, there's the we door. need the restroom. He's but that's what him. I love. Mm -hmm. I love this, this world is such that we do have freedom of, not freedom of will, but freedom of choice, which is cool. Mm -hmm. You know, you can choose to go, yeah, I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. I think I'll do Scientology. Mm -hmm. And I have friends in Scientology, and mm -hmm. I think that's cool. I think I want to do Buddhism. I think I want to, and it's mm -hmm. all many roads leading to the same exactly. thing. I agree. The minute you think you know you'd be a Muslim, or whatever, it's all the same thing. It's all, it's all aspects of the same. You know, mm -hmm. I bet God is laughing up there. But it's all. We're not gonna get this figured out. Yeah, they don't have it. We don't That's have it right. figured out. No. I mean, but if you, I love reading about, you know, if you really do your history and you really stay away from Wikipedia, <laughs> and you really do your research, mm -hmm. and and uh, you'll find that it all derives from the same place. Not one source. Not one source. We somehow must have touched each other. And and also how the light shined on certain countries throughout the decade, throughout the uh, eons. Mm -hmm. you know, India doing what it did with Krishna, and, you know, this mm -hmm. country doing the Buddhas, the Asia, the, you know, this thing, uh, America, the Europe, the Israel, the Islam, you know, it, it gets passed around because all those were great. They, they all had what I call the tra what JR calls the mystical traveler. Mm -hmm. they all, they, we're just calling something that mm -hmm. so that nobody can throw stones at it. Mm -hmm. And a mystical traveler is just the name John Roger came up with to identify the prophet or the anointed person. And that person it was passed on mm -hmm. and it went to Abraham Lincoln and went through you know all these from poetry, the age of poetry, the age of music, the age of film, mm -hmm. the age of literature, the age of language, even war, you know. Mm -hmm. So all, oh, you never know quite, you know, quite, uh, you know, you don't know who is the guy. No, because I think it's, you, you, this is where you'll feel it and where you'll know for yourself what, you know, how that works. And it, to me, for me, it expands, so. I always, I always will feel it through here, you know. Exactly. Always through my heart. I mean, I gave her a quote that somebody sent, Hicks, Abraham Hicks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ruin it, but basically it's not about hard work. It's about finding the vibration mm. that you're in line with it. And then, then it comes at ease because I mean, we have these discussions with Zoe and other friends. Oh, I worked really hard. Oh, I'm so tired. And I never utter that word because uh, what I do is mm -hmm. joy. I love, I love the labor, right. my labor. So people that are working and they're complaining about the hours and all that, mm -hmm. they're not really working. They're 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 in another. Well, when you're worried about the hours. Yeah, they you're got talking. the attitude. Right. They got a different attitude, mm -hmm. and and it should be more about, um, dude, I I love what I do and it's so easy. It's at ease because you're vibrating to the joy of your job. Exactly. You know, it's funny because I, any work-related thing on, on my computer, like when I categorize something that coming from people who I'm working with, and it's, I don't call it work-related. I call it work, love, substance. It's, it's, all, it's been that way for years. But that, to me, my work is that. It's, 
what I love to do. It sustains me. Um, I, it's not work. Yeah. It's I can't see myself doing anything else. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and just being who I am. And even, like, I'll jump on, I mean, it, something starts to change in me. I mean, I went and, and uh, every now and then I, I, these stores know me and they let me jump in and pretend I'm working. In there. And I love it. I love how you can, I think if I, if I were to, to do regular, uh, let's say a regular job, I would have five of them. So I wouldn't be bored. That's right. I would have a I would like to work at McDonald's and then switch up and do some shoe repair mm -hmm. and switch up and then do some bag some groceries bag some groceries mm -hmm. and just jump around yeah. and do it for free mm -hmm. you know just I'll do it yeah because you know, all of a sudden you jump into the the, the the thing I know I I think it's hard when you can you need to get people need to make a living that's there mm -hmm. I get that but. But to make a living, you know, to destroy their bodies and their mm -hmm. selves because they're reaching for something that right. that needs to be that needs to be examined. Why I'm reaching for that? I mean, I wanted to be a movie star, and then I wanted all these houses and women, and then I had to examine why I want mm -hmm. all that. Well, when did you know you wanted to be a movie star? Fourteen. Okay. Yeah. Just could you t just I mean since we're talking about it, why don't you give me a little background? Even before that, I you know I I, I loved uh, Dean Martin's voice, awesome. and I used to watch TV. I used to watch the Matt Helm series, and he had women around his circular bed, mm -hmm. and all these women. Martini. <laughs> Martini. Yeah, and a cigarette. He was the American James Bond, <laughs> That's right. and I was like, wow. And my dad was not too shabby. My stepfather was a pimp like that. Mm -hmm. You know, cheated on my mom. And, you know, this is what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. I grew up in all these things. And when you're a child, you don't judge it. That's the interesting mm -hmm. thing about children. And, I, and today I don't judge it. I don't judge my stepfather. Mm -hmm. So it's, you can't grow up, be resentful, and then backstab your parents. <laughs> you got to when you're a kid, you don't know any difference, mm -hmm. so then that wasn't you mm -hmm. that's judging then, it's you judging later. Exactly. And that's you, you're a corrupt mm -hmm. that person at that person, mm -hmm. judging corrupt people, so. so. So you always knew you were gonna be an actor? Always knew I was gonna be an actor. Um, but anyway, I gave you a little bit of that background mm -hmm. because I'm the only one that went off and did acting. But my mom, you know, she seemed to be a dancer, dancing mm -hmm. at clubs and then Dean Martin, and then uh, I didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. How, and then I just, I guess destiny, fate, God had a lot to do with it, for sure. I was always praying, please, please. I picked up a guitar, I couldn't play, I couldn't mm -hmm. sing. I can sing and play you can now. Sing now. Yeah, I can yeah. sing and play yeah. now. But I was always ambitious before the talent. I was mm -hmm. always out there before the talent came. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to work for it, so I was, I love what Johnny Depp said in Blow. He said, uh, my ambition exceeded my talent. And I still believe that's that. A, that's a brilliant. I believe I have super, I have cojones and mm -hmm. I have super ambition, mm -hmm. but the talent isn't, it's not catching up. It's catching up. Yeah. But it'll be there. And I feel when I see the new mm -hmm. technologies coming out, mm -hmm. the talent is already there now. So I, I felt like I was always born ahead of my time, and I just needed to get older and get it. Boy, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, when I was 19 years old, I was a, I was just not there mm -hmm. with not with nothing, nothing, women, mm -hmm. nothing, cars, didn't understand things. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm 48. And I'm like I get it all, you know. Just, but it's you know. Mm -hmm. Now you have to like okay that's easy, let's move on, I got no time for that, I'll do this, but when you're 19, you're like, I want stardom now, and, but I, I at 19, I did my first film, uh, I did my TV show, Fame, okay. Coco's boyfriend, I thought it was going to be James Dean, again, no talent, <clears throat> but uh, I, I got lucky, mm -hmm. and then I did Nightmare on Elm Street, then I studied, and that's mm -hmm. where I kept trying, I, I didn't just tell God, give it to me, mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I'll work for it. Right. Did you meet someone along the way that helped you see that part? Yes. About yourself? I, Did you? This one guy uh, took me off the streets and, you know, he, he said, you could be better than this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then took me to the Bodhi tree. You know, mm -hmm. they closed it, by the way. 
it looked empty to me mm. inside. But basically, I used to go to Aunt Tilly's health food store, mm -hmm. stay up till one in the morning, drink kefir. You know, it was a big deal to take to get a ghetto kid out of the neighborhood and you're drinking kefir. <laughs> Like, remember that? <laughs> I do. It was the 1980s, you know, you're drinking kefir, you're like, wow, you know, liquid yogurt. Mm -hmm. And then uh, vitamins, B vitamins were like, was like crack. Right? <laughs> That's true. B, B vitamins they still were like, are. your <laughs> mind would be like, I can see. Right. And then he was showing me, and the whole thing about living in LA was who can get closer to the beach. If you got closer mm -hmm. to the beach, you were somebody. Absolutely. And I was in downtown LA, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And I was, and I kept getting closer to the beach. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, I'm moving up. And when I went to the Bodhi Trails in Beverly Hills. Oh, yeah. And I was like, wow, there's other stuff here besides mm -hmm. uh, calling the cops mm -hmm. and telling them that 7 Eleven's getting robbed, <laughs> you know, and throwing water balloons at them and stuff like that. So funny. And uh, sorry, officers. <laughs> uh, but then, then I started studying. Then I took it serious, and then I met, I got lucky, I met one of the greatest agents ever, Ed Lamato, and he happened to be working with Richard Gere, he took on Mel Gibson, and he just passed away last year, but probably one of the greatest agents ever. Mm. And then I went to the greatest acting teacher, uh, Peggy Fury, and then I met another one who's alive, Howard Fine. And these people, you know, one thing you do learn is, you can't do it by yourself. So when, when I see these movie stars, I love Tom Cruise, but Tom Cruise has an entourage that keeps him looking good. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. All these movie stars, they all have an entourage that make them look good. They don't just wake up. No. Living in LA, you see that. Yeah. yeah. So what happens <laughs> is to be a star, that's why I was like, oh, I don't want to be that. I don't want, I want to do it my way. Mm -hmm. So I, I have my own entourage, but it, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily, I believe the, the, old, the, the old ways of doing things are going to change quickly. Yeah. And you have to adapt. Tom adapted. You know, he just mm -hmm. bought half of Hollywood, so that's the way to do mm -hmm. it. But uh, it. Uh, I've always loved Tom Cruise's career. That's, that's a pretty awesome career mm -hmm. and, and a good man. And so, you know, you follow certain actors. After a while, you start following yourself because mm -hmm. you start realizing, well, I'm the only hero that is going to make it. Because sometimes you follow this actor and then they die mm -hmm. of an overdose and you're like, oh, wrong example. So then you follow, you know, then you're like, hey, I kind of like him, you know. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always been. I love what Jared said once: fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and you do the NLP, you know, Anthony Robbins style. Yeah, I, I did NLP. You can NLP. NLP. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. you can do the what if. Even Stella Adler mm -hmm. used to do the what if, you know. What if I was an, a, a president of the United States? Mm -hmm. How would I act? Then that's how you do roles. That mm -hmm. could be that way. But what if? Mm -hmm. Act like as if. Mm -hmm. Act as if I'm somebody important. I'm not important, but I act as if I'm important. Right, right. And, and then people go, who's that guy? When right. I walk into a, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's easy to do. Right. And then they find out I have no money and I'm nobody. <laughs> But basically, the illusion. <laughs> the illusion. But so is Hollywood. So That's, is everything. And, you know, great place to be when we're really looking at our illusions. But it's the same thing JR always talks about. Um, JR always talks about when you get together, when you're dating, mm -hmm. you have false flags up. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. I'm mm -hmm. pretty. Mm -hmm. And then the whole thing is uh, when I used to date, I used to take girls on 15 hour rides. So I would say, hey, how's it going? You really know a lot about it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you want to go out? And they'd be like, what? I'm going to go to Utah skiing. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. And then you take that 15-hour mm -hmm. that ride, mm -hmm. you're going to either love each other or hate mm -hmm. each other. So yeah. I got lucky. That's funny. That's really, really But you never go on a one because everything starts to drop after the sixth hour of traveling. Yeah. Feet are up. That's right. Things, toes are up on <laughs> the windshield. Right. Exactly. She's sweating. You're dirty. Yeah. And then it's then it's real. And it's like, yeah. oh. Not, not, there's no no reason to impress. Exactly. Then at that point, it's just, you know, you're stuck at the car with me for 15 hours. We might as well enjoy ourselves. I love that. I love right. the 15 hour day. That's funny. Funny. That's it. Hey, you want to go insight. out? You want to go out? Uh, yeah, you got 15 hours? <laughs> that's what? right. That's right. <laughs> No, I like it. It's tantra of dating. Oh, that's true. Because it can go that long, they say. One hour yeah. sex, 14 hours driving. Seems like a good idea to me. <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know. But so the movie, The Way Shower. I mean, we're getting you here because you're here in LA. The Way Shower is. Um, oh, sorry. No, you're here in LA now, and you're you've you you kind of like you said you kind of following yourself. And I was, yes. Uh, and oh, there it is, The Way yeah. Shower. Mm-hmm. You know, Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there it is. There we go. And it'll be well. One of my fantasies was to have a premiere. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna um, lie about it. You know, we basically rented the theater, so basically we're mm-hmm. gonna have it at my favorite theater, the Cinerama Dome, which is AKA the Art Light. I don't know why they call it the Art Light, but it's whatever. The Cinerama Dome is where I first saw right. Apocalypse Now, Francis Ford Coppola. And I remember Francis Ford Coppola actually rented the theater. And a lot of these mm-hmm. independent directors were four-walling theaters, mm-hmm. <clears throat> cutting deals. Um, um, I wish, you know, I'm not at all in that caliber at all. Uh, but I do have cojones again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can go do that. And with the help of my friends, we go do it. And so we rented the theater. We're going to have the red carpet there. Mm-hmm. We're going to invite friends. Mm-hmm. And... You know, um, we're, it's not, it's a different genre. We're trying to create a genre, mm-hmm. a spiritual thriller. And um, I want to be the Spielberg of spiritual movies. Because I think it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a director in it. It doesn't have a champion championing mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about uh, Talking Heads documentary. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, like, I love the movie Inception. Yeah. Oh, and the Tree fantastic. of Life. I haven't seen it, but it seems to go on forever. Tree of Life, excellent. But um, there's there's other mm-hmm. films that we can mm-hmm. really inspire to do that can. The Matrix mm-hmm. is by far one of the one of the greatest movies I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Yeah. Uh, what Dreams May Come was a film. What Dreams May Come was. was well, uh, years ago, you know, when it first came out, and just I was on my own spiritual journey, and that movie just. It was. I didn't cool. really know quite what to think of it. Yeah. yeah, it was just really um, perfect timing for me, but it was a wonderful film. So I know what you're saying, that, that there's, I think there's room for um, that genre. And this movie, most spiritual films... Oh, The Book of Eli with Denzel Washington. I haven't seen that. So you put, mm-hmm. you put a movie star mm-hmm. in anything, mm-hmm. people go see it. Mm-hmm. It's got to make a story. Mm-hmm. There's nothing better than stories, but, yeah. but I, uh, I think... It's it's a perfect timeline. Apocalypto is a fantastic movie. It's violent, but it's very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, the way showers, it's got a rating of PG thirteen. It's yeah. We we I wanted to knock out sex, and mm-hmm. I'm tired of uh, you know I've done millions of love scenes mm-hmm. in movies, and I really I see the way it's, you know they teach you to write scripts, and they always mm-hmm. say you know um, go get the girl mm-hmm. in the movie. Mm-hmm. And then there's like, uh, what was it? It was Sex and Violence. I didn't want to do a lot of cuss words. I learned from the other movie I did. <clears throat> but I was like, get the girl. I'm not going to get the girl in this movie. So what do you do? You know, so this is about finding yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily finding yourself through the girl. Right. A lot of movies do that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, well, let's find yourself through your teacher. Or mm-hmm. you find yourself through yourself. Mm-hmm. Let's point that. So I have this girl in this movie that this haunting thing, mm-hmm. but basically, because we chase men chase after women to find their identity, not just that to get a little poom tang, but but they go find their right. identity in her. Oh, I couldn't have done it without her. You know, I'm sorry, but there's candidates out there going, I could have done it without her. Yes, you could have done it without mm-hmm. her, and she could have done it without you. Mm-hmm. And we have to stop saying that um, we need someone. We Don't need her, you know, him. or we need him. Mm-hmm. How about you need, you know, mm-hmm. that the energy up there, because that's what sustains mm-hmm. you and her. So I don't particularly uh, buy that. You know, I couldn't have done it. You know, and and it's always a little bit of greedy because I see the guys mm-hmm. win the Oscars and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank my wife for putting up with me. Mm-hmm. So what was she? Someone that put up with you, with your crap. Or did you really need her? You didn't need her. You were dumping on her mm-hmm. and all your crap. She held, raised the kids without you because you were busy making mm-hmm. movies. And then you want to thank her because you want some silly Oscar that you bought. <laughs> so I'm just saying, it's not necessarily. Uh, I've heard that before. Yeah. I have heard that before. Yeah. More people than you know. Yeah. Um, you can buy it. Yeah. 
some people have to actually earn it. I mean, there's great movies out mm-hmm. there, granted, but there's a lot like it, like like the super PACs. There's mm-hmm. super PACs for the Oscars. Mm-hmm. It's a campaign. It's yeah. Like, you know, what's the, the latest movie right now? The artist. <clears throat> It's 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 Harvey Weinstein competing against himself. He's got my, he's got the right. he's got the right. he's got who's the girl Marilyn Monroe. He's mm-hmm. got the artist. He's got everything, and then he then he decides where he's gonna super pack the money to go. It's a joke. Like, that's well, interesting point of view. Look, he makes true. great movies. All the money. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if he makes good movies. He distributes good movies. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Well, I'll probably never work for Harvey, so I'm okay. <laughs> Well, you have some. Bring it on, Harvey. <sighs> Bes- besides, buy this? besides you in Bob. the film as a star in the film, who else? Who else Eric is Roberts that? is my hero. Thank okay. you. Eric Roberts is my Sally Kirkman is my love. I mean, I love her. She's a uh, a student of John Ryan. Lee Taylor Young did a cameo, uh, but Eric, I've always loved. He's mm-hmm. an amazing actor. He was Pope of Village. A lot of people don't know that, so I have to like tell them, and then you gotta go look it up, <clears throat> go on iTunes. He did was nominated for an Oscar for the the Runaway Train. Um, it was with uh, uh, John Boyd. Do you remember that? Yes. And uh, it was an awesome movie. And uh, look, Charlie, they cut my thumb. Pope of Greenwich Village, and then he did the Pepsi, the Coca Cola. Coca-Cola Boy or Coca-Cola something, and then he did King of the Gypsies. He did Star 80. Yes. And this guy's like a massive movie star. Mm-hmm. And um, he did the movie, and I was like, wow. Yeah. Super, I was starstruck. Tough guy. Eliza uh, Roberts helped me a lot. And uh, and he's, uh, you know what? I, I would tell all the directors out there, you're missing not hiring. This guy's a genius, uh, and of course he's brother to Julia Roberts. Right. But um, uh, this guy's amazing, amazing actor. I mean, you can tell him anything, and he'll do mm-hmm. anything. And, and he has a prominent role in the film, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he plays John Rogers' father, okay. Harvey Hinkins. Okay. And I wish I would have had more for him because he mm-hmm. shined. He was so good. Mm-hmm. He's I can't such wait. a good actor. Like I, it was very hard for me to direct him because. Mm-hmm. He was sometimes you know, he, he, he's a kind of actor that goes, "What do I do now, pal?" Hmm. And I'm like, "Whatever." He goes, "No, <laughs> no. What do you want me to do, pal?" And I'm like, "Oh shit, uh, I don't want to ruin it." Hmm. What am I? So I would pretend to give him some kind of, or, you know, what? Uh, well, fake it till you make it, right? Some, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I was, you know, he's looking at me like I'm gonna give him some direction. Mm-hmm. It's uh, no, no. Mm-hmm. Like Steven Soderbergh, when I worked with him on traffic, he would watch you rehearse and then maybe say something, but it, he'd leave it up to you guys. Mm-hmm. And that that's awesome. That is. But some directors like Eric need you to, to, to just talk to him. Mm-hmm. And once you talk to him, he's, Eric doesn't need a director. Mm-hmm. So he's like super star, like talented, mm-hmm. blow your mind away. He can cry. I mean, I need him to cry. And I hate that. I hate going up to an actor and I'm giving him the results. Mm-hmm. I need you to cry. And, I, I, <clears throat> and he's like, give me five minutes. Mm-hmm. And then he cried. And I was like, oh, my God. And it was good crying. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I have, you know, enough talking about Eric Roberts. No, but, but I think it's important. I mean, of course. And, this is, uh, include all of our, all of our wonderful. But he's the star. Peter Stormare, mm-hmm. who was the blonde guy in Fargo. Awesome actor. I got him too. I could not believe. Um, we worked on a TV on a movie together. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we won't mention that movie, but uh, it's okay. Uh, but basically, he took my call and he came. And he's an amazing person, mm-hmm. an amazing actor, mm-hmm. and he's off the hook. He's the kind of actor you, you can also say um, whatever you want, <laughs> you know. And then he worked. He had known the Bergman movies. He's from Sweden, if I'm saying that right. And so he immediately knew what I needed in this movie. And he was such a big collaborator in creating. He plays the role of doubt, the prince of doubt. Okay. And he's the personification of doubt. So we, you know, mm-hmm. you, you can't talk about doubt. Your doubt or? My doubt. As your character. Your My doubt. character. Okay, God. Oh, and cool. he's probably the overall doubt in the world. He's this mm-hmm. dark. 
character mm-hmm. that whispers in your ear, and then you attain the Tao to your life. Mm-hmm. So the key thing that I wanted to, and I don't know if I can arti- if I articulated it much in the movie, but at what point do, do we um, do we uh, it, does the doubt press impress us? Mm-hmm. It comes into our a subconscious, unconscious, and then who plants that in there? Mm-hmm. If we all come from babies, we're just pure, we mm-hmm. come from God. The veil drops, mm-hmm. and then impressions are made on yeah. us. And then whispers and voices, mm-hmm. and, and no one can teach us how to discern that. Next mm-hmm. thing you know, we're crazy kids. Yeah. And um, we have a belief about ourselves. That's right. That keeps us I think not I mean, expanding. I, I think it's, I'm sorry to say, the parents mm-hmm. do the kids in. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then the job is for the kids to grow up and forgive the parents, mm-hmm. and then they'll do their kids in, and it just becomes it's like that. It's a cycle, unless yeah. you can break it. Unless you can break it, mm-hmm. and basically, um, it's a tough journey. Mm-hmm. But you know, unless the parents mm-hmm. are enlightened enough mm-hmm. and start enlightening right. the kid, mm-hmm. and then, you know, you go move on mm-hmm. from there. But man, you can. I've done a lot of seminars with John Roger and. Mm-hmm. And here's the problem with the kids. They just don't know how to let it go. Mm. Because the parents did the best they could. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Then the kids are just, they ruin their own lives. Well, because they're still blaming their... Yeah, they just, right. they love mm-hmm. the position of victim, mm-hmm. victimization. Because mm-hmm. it's a guard, it's an award-winning position. Absolutely. They get well, all sorts of attention. Mm-hmm. And, oh, they're getting something out of it. They're getting you know, something still out of it. And I can't stand victim. Mm. So, you know, I, I, you know, there, there's, it's a care, it's a fine line with me. If you were, you know, obviously if you were abused mm-hmm. and all that, and all that, you know, I'll kind of listen to you to a certain point, but then you gotta go handle that. You, you, have you to. can't be a 55 year old man talking about abuse. No. You gotta have to let no. that go, and because otherwise it's that six year old or 12 year old that was abused mm-hmm. still living in right. you. Well, it's a, it's a self-identification yeah. to that. So now they, they actually don't have an identity. If, if they actually lost that particular part of themselves, it's scary for some people to, to say, now who am I? If I'm not that, if I'm not that victim, then I, now I'm self-responsible, and now I have to be in the world in a completely different way than I've been operating. And, you know? and, and I love what Jared said, pain is pain. Mm-hmm. You know, you love people. Mm-hmm. But he also didn't say, you know, you um, you let them do the petty tyrant thing mm-hmm. or the the what's it called, the, something of weakness, tyranny of weakness. Mm-hmm. So that the, the weak, you know, the, the fact that they were molested, mm-hmm. then that that excuses their terror mm-hmm. on you and people. Mm-hmm. Well, so what? I mean, I was abused. So that's excuses why you're complete a hole. So and then so that's the reward they get to get away with murder. Right. And, and well, that's a n- nice little excuse that they you know yeah. that they have, and I you know you don't discount whatever their feelings are. Always to me, you know, being understanding exactly what you're saying because I come from that had that background in my life. But everybody, that's you know, not I, who I am. Almost everybody I know mm-hmm. was abused one right. way or another. I was abused verbally. I got mm-hmm. beat by mom. Mm-hmm. So what? Yeah. And I I actually call my mom and dad. I go thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm like why? I mean, it was a strange call. I mm-hmm. said, hey, I just want to say thank you for abandoning me mm-hmm. and leaving my mom and not marrying my mom. Because mm-hmm. I got to. He goes, are you an a hole? Why are you calling me about that mm-hmm. for? And I'm like, I just want to say thank you. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to blame yourself. And click, they hang up. Because mm-hmm. I was okay with it, and I just right. didn't want them to be to be bothered by it. And I was like, and my mom was like, Ma, what's the big deal? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want anybody to feel bad about my, you know, where I ended up in a good place. Right. Well, like you said, we all have free will, and there is choice. But I made choices to get right. here. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, you you make, and sometimes it's not an all. It isn't always an easy thing to do to make a choice that, especially if you have that dark doubt that we were talking about from the film, that part of ourselves that says no, you can't, or you know, remember what happened the last time you did that. Right? And I do, and I do. You know, mm-hmm. last night it was creeping up on me because mm-hmm. it creeps up. It mm-hmm. always does. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm human. Right. But you got to be able to just. Uh, lately, at 48, I'm so good. Mm-hmm. 
I just get up and go do stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have, I get depressed for about a minute. Mm-hmm. I just look at him. And then I have a really smart person inside me that goes, are you an idiot? <laughs> get your get your butt up and let's get going. I'm like, right, oh, good call, you know? Right, exactly. Because my awareness knows how to, I just have a really good mm-hmm. high self that just pops the awareness and goes, what are you doing? And I was like, oops, sorry. And yeah. then I moved on. Yeah. But I never, but that's also one that I don't ignore. Right. A lot of people do. They go get a drink. They go mm-hmm. do some drugs. And then they numb that, that voice. Mm-hmm. It's a powerful voice in me. It just gets louder. It's huge. And it goes, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Yeah. You're like, fuck. All right. Mm-hmm. Go to bed now. All right. right. You know that the, the, that doubt says you have no you have you don't even know what you're doing. You 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 know you're gonna get caught. Someone's gonna find out that you're a fraud. You know, and it's the illusion, like you said, that you fake it till you make it. Like you, you know, it's just like you see yourself, you know, bigger than your talent or whatever. What was that quote that you you? My 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 ambition exceeds my talent. Right. I mean, to me, that and that's when the doubt comes in and says, you know, see, you know. But I, 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 I welcome to be found out because yeah. you can't drop that far down. No. You're actually, you're. It's just doubt. I always like to, I like to play poker mm-hmm. because I play every hand. I don't care. Oh, you do. So then, uh, when the doubt, <laughs> when the doubt comes, I play every hand. Oh, you're a winner. I'm a loser. <laughs> I love it. But see, I don't care. I scare that's the crap right. out of everybody. Because they, the table. they know you're going to play it. They're yeah. terrified. Well, that's the best I have no money. All, right? I have no money, and I don't <laughs> care. And I destroy the table psychologically. That's right. They're like, this guy's crazy. He plays every hand, that's and he right. goes up against me every hand. That's right. It's the biggest bluff of all. That's right? the biggest bluff. <laughs> that's right. Because I'm not going to bluff. Everybody knows now I play every hand. And now that's the most dangerous individual. Mm-hmm. Because they're going, I mean, I, I run out of money quicker, mm-hmm. but I'm dangerous in the table. They're like, well, wait, what, is it good or bad? What's he doing? <laughs> well, he's playing every hand. <laughs> okay, the most easiest person to fill out, to, right. to get out of a, a table is the guy that doesn't play, and then he does play, then you're going, all right, I'm out. Yeah, right. I just go, I just play every hand. Oh, that's so funny. That's, that's the way to do it. Play well, hand. that's playing full out. Full it sounds out. like you do that with your life. I just and and you mm-hmm. have to play every hand. You mm-hmm. have to. Uh, I love what Senna or Sienna, the race car driver guy. Okay, that because you we were talking go about see the documentary. Right. The guy tells this French guy that Sienna's been crashing a lot, mm-hmm. and then he you know he falls him out. He goes, well, you've had more crashes, and Sienna goes, hey, listen, you should know this better than I. The minute you stop going for the gap, mm-hmm. you're no longer a racer. Wow. And I went for the gap. I go for the what gap. What a metaphor for so life, right? The metaphor for the life. Oh my life. So, and and also another thing I'm learning: mm-hmm. the minute we stop seeking is the minute we die. Yes. Physically here. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, spiritually here. Mm-hmm. Because the the minute the people stop seeking to learn and they think they know it, I think that's what kills you. Mm-hmm. That you think you know it, and I, I just want to keep seeking. That's my alarm. Mm-hmm. So. I don't think we all know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's, you and I don't know, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that this film is mm-hmm. uh, Apocalypse Now. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to be a good filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I wanted to learn how to begin, shoot, and finish a movie. Mm-hmm. I can do that very well. Mm-hmm. I learned it, and I know, and I'm learning better how to do better stories mm-hmm. and how to really trust and work with your editors. Mm-hmm and how to really work with people in production. Mm-hmm. But it is a dictatorship, make no doubt mm-hmm. about it. When the director wants something, the director should get it. And you know what, I had to learn that the hard way because I was an actor, mm-hmm. and I, I am an actor, and I had to add the director mode on, but when I'm an actor, I don't want to listen to the director. Right. And it's like, wow, now I understand. Don't you be there after? It was a massive karmic, mm-hmm backflow to me as a producer mm-hmm. that was getting up tight with actors asking for a lot more money mm-hmm. and they wanted accommodations and and movie making is all about accommodation accommodating somebody at the four seasons mm-hmm. they, they treat movies like they're to be taken care of and that's what ruins actors mm-hmm. yeah, I got a limo for you, you got a jacuzzi mm-hmm. a four story house right. we're renting for you and your family We'll be butt kissing you for 21 days, <laughs> yeah. but then after that you'll be normal. And then that's what wrong. That's what happens with the actor is he's like, well, 
he's in a product he's in a movie for six months and everybody's doing what he wants them to do mm -hmm. same as a director right. they go back to their life and things aren't flowing that way yeah and it becomes very stressful because no one's paying attention to me well, I think there's an um, addiction that happens sometimes. They gotta that. take a downtime right. of like go make some shoes. That's right. why I go jump in shoemaking or <laughs> gardening. I love this place called Buttercup at Helms where people go shopping. Mm -hmm. I love I love I love uh, furniture shopping with uh, at this place down here in Venice. And it gets your mind creatively going, well, how would you design something? Yeah. And then you start, you know, I, I just learned it way later, but all these acting teachers tell me, go to a museum, see a piece of art, what would you do? You know, now I'm like, now I just walk around going, hey, yeah, why don't we create this? What if we created that? Mm -hmm. Then your mind, then you're tapped into creating, and that's fun. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, this film, we're going to talk about it one more time, because I want to... Where can we find it? So okay. I want to know all those details. We know that the the world red carpet premiere. The world red carpet premiere will be on Sunset, which is right at uh, ArcLight Cinerama Dome. Mm -hmm. It'll be, uh, I think it's between Cahuenga or something like mm -hmm. that on Sunset, but March 8, 2012, okay. before the Mayan calendar ends the world. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'll do but basically, we're going to be on Hulu iTunes and Amazon, hopefully at the same time. Uh, I, March again, 8th? March 8th. Okay. Because once again, I believe things are changing. Mm -hmm. I think it's obviously it's all online. It's Kids are downloading, watching movies. Um, you know, I, you're going to have to be mm -hmm. a big film to get into the theater. But uh, at the same date, we'll be playing in a theater mm -hmm. in Price, Utah, in Logan, Logan Utah. And Connecticut, Mystic Connecticut, mm -hmm. and we're looking at Chicago. But we'll figure it out. But, mm -hmm. uh, and I think Canada, Calgary. Mm -hmm. So all these places have the, the film. Mm -hmm. I'll have some theatrical release, and mostly the VODs. I love mm -hmm. iTunes and mm -hmm. Steve Jobs, so I'm committed towards that. Right, that's excellent. Well, that there's also a book, uh, the way to a book. Yeah, well, I wanted to. This is um, Jared's written many books, mm -hmm. some with. Paul Kay, some mm -hmm. with um, other writers, mm -hmm. uh, Polly Sanderson right. and Betsy Alexander. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a book uh, that was taken from the stories that he told, and okay. Betsy and some other friends helped weave it together. Okay. But uh, it's very, I took from the stories. Okay. And the, the actual seminar packet is called the Way Shower Packet. Okay. That you can get on Amazon, okay. you can get this on Amazon. Mm -hmm. But basically, I wanted this to be. It's me trying to be like marketing guy, mm -hmm. but I wanted the I wanted the poster to match the book mm -hmm. and the movie because if you really want to know more about John Roger, this is him in his own words talking about the mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. We wrote, you know, when you do a movie based on stories, you got to change the script and make this mm -hmm. this way and that way. But these are the actual stories. Some of them didn't make the movie. We the, I, I did a long version of the mm -hmm. movie, a crazy version of the movie. It was pretty cool cut very similar to like the limey and it there's there's reincarnation stories that Jared tells of India mm -hmm. and um, more of uh, Kabir stories mm -hmm. and uh, and how he finds his, himself he gets a bunch of tickets in San Francisco and sees a judge and the judge's like what are you doing and he's like I don't know I'm just I don't know what I'm doing and he goes well who, who should I ask? I'm like, well, I'm trying to find myself. And he goes, well, have you? Have you seen a psychiatrist? Mm. And Jerry goes, no. He, I did. I went to go see a psychiatrist. They didn't know either. <laughs> and it's just great conversations that he has with all these people that that eventually he, he I remember the judge, Judge Busey, tells Jr. when he dismisses him, if you uh, ever figure out how you found yourself, will you let me know? Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool yeah. stuff. So there's and a he lot is of letting people know. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, and the church and Jr. and friends have mm -hmm. allowed me to be part of moving again, driving the bus, mm -hmm. and uh, not ducking your friends, right. whether they have good publicity or not. I love this one quote that Spirit gave me. It's, mm -hmm. It says, uh, "I don't Google my friends. I get to know who they are." 
Mm. So, uh, so I mean, I really yeah. think in this age, it's it's really important to check things out. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to check things out, like Jr. says, for a year or two. I don't, you know, I don't like to just make make my judgmental call. I, I go on instincts. Mm -hmm. I don't just look somebody up and go, you know. Um, I'll just, I just check Wikipedia out. Mm -hmm. This guy's a devil worshiper. And I'm like, uh, first of all, I want, I always, um, <laughs> since I was young, I've, I've been always, um, and today someone can ruin you by blogging yes. about you. Mm -hmm. And this thing has to stop. I mean, mm -hmm. that slander should be punishable by death, <laughs> and then there'll be no more slander. That's right. <laughs> um, but uh, it's cruel, but it's not freedom. Freedom of speech isn't freedom to ruin somebody's mm -hmm. life. Like, right. You might as well. Um, you know, it's it's almost like you killed them, you mm -hmm. know, physically because they, you know, that's why this whole campaign thing's fun to watch, mm -hmm. because all they're doing it, they're like gladiators, but they don't go to the arena and destroy their body; they just destroy the character, right. forever and forever more. It's like pretty ruthless. Whether it's true or not. Yeah, well, it yeah. doesn't matter. No, I, the truth. I think truth doesn't really have a lot of room. And you know whose fault it is? The fault is the people. Mm -hmm who don't have the smarts enough to go, I don't believe any of that, mm -hmm. I want to read some more, mm -hmm. I want to learn, I want right. to meet them. Mm -hmm. uh, what's exactly what, you know, well, like I, the Bible. Mm -hmm. the, I, I read a great scholar, you know, I read this guy, he's amazing, I can't remember his name, it's called Misquoting Jesus. They'll tell you who really wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Jesus is my guy, I love Jesus, he is my, uh, that's, that's my boss, mm -hmm. Jr. but that doesn't mean, I mean, they totally leave out that he was a Jew. They totally leave out that he, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, taught, was a rabbi and taught mm -hmm. the Old Testament. Totally leaves everything out. It's written by a guy, a bunch of guys that never met him. Mm -hmm. 60, 40 years later. And things have changed. Right. Things were oral before. Mm -hmm. They lost their original mm -hmm. manuscripts. Now they're, you know, it shows up somewhere. It's just a lot of mm -hmm. weird stuff that... <laughs> You start to go, just can, mm -hmm. and also this scholar asked these hard, hard right Christian guys, mm -hmm. have you guys, um, you guys totally love Jesus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have any, have any of you read the Bible? No. This is what's going on. It's just ignorance. It's just, I right. can't, I can't deal with ignorance. Right. I believe you gotta, if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, cool, but don't, don't start talking stuff if you haven't read the Bible to be able to make sense of what the heck it says. Right. And be careful what you're spouting because it might not be the Word of mm -hmm. God. Right. It's inspired by people. Right. It's written by people that were inspired by God. Right, right. So you're an inspiration right. too by God. So why don't you write something? Right, well. We why don't all, you check it? We all have our filters. So, we, you know, that's what I say. When I, when I read something negatively about someone, I always, for me personally, I take a look at, um, you know, I don't, that's just one story. What is, is it true? I, you know, is that a believable story? Is it true? And are they human being? Are, who are they really at the core of who they are? They're, they're not that with what people are saying about them. That's not the truth of who they are. That might have been, you know, the circumstances in their life or whatever. And, you know, I'm certainly the last person to ever throw a stone at anyone. <clears throat> You know, so I really, I can include that with, with what I'm reading. But you're right about the blogging. That's very... That's it's, awful. You know, my, I, I'm... It's like, uh, um, it's, I read Condoleezza Rice's book, mm -hmm. and we lost the whole uh, idea of journalism, mm -hmm. where you need three sources mm -hmm. or two. Mm -hmm. uh, blogging is, I don't need any source. Mm -hmm. I hate you. Mm -hmm. Well, know? it's an opinion. Like it I really did, is a, an opinion piece. It's I did really this movie, Atlas Shrugged. Um, yeah. Beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, Iran. Even liberals and Republicans mm -hmm. love it. Forget parties. Intelligent people mm -hmm. love the book. Mm -hmm. And I read the book. And even if you're not intelligent, read the book. Mm -hmm. I, re I read Fountainhead when I was 14, 15 years old. It changed my life. The Godfather and uh, Once a Creature King. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, uh, they, use, they, they decided the marketing technique tactic to attack the liberals and use Tea Party situation for all that. And I'm like, why? It's a great idea to point out because that's what Shakespeare did mm -hmm. to Elizabeth, pointed out the 
current situation mm -hmm. by plays. He was nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare was. So therefore, and, he, and, and it's a good bet, he worked with the queen mm -hmm. as someone else. So my thing is, the, that Atlas Shrug was a great mirror back to society, period, right. not a particular president. And he, they should have, I mean, even, even Ariana Huffington was, uh, she had read the book, she mm -hmm. loved the book. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that, because she, she's I, I, Huffington Post, doesn't mean that they're, it's, it's retarded. They, it's they, associated with the part wrong word, particular party. Wrong word to use, but right. basically not a good idea mm -hmm. because you want to use, you want to, you want to educate people, and as soon as you swing it to one party or the other, and Glenn Beck, I mean, he talks like he read the book. It's so hilarious. But we did the movie, and they did the, the they did the promotion of it, and it, and it, and it backfired, mm -hmm. and it went one one party, and it didn't go to the rest of the world because 58 million people bought the book or something mm -hmm. like that. 58 million people could have bought the ticket right. to go see it. Exactly. But you alienated, and people alienated, and I, I didn't think it was a good idea. Uh, I don't know why we went into that, but my thing was, oh, bloggers were killing us, mm -hmm. and I'm part of the movie. They were just killing us, and mm -hmm. I bet you two-thirds of the bloggers never read the book. Mm -hmm. I even had an interview with a blogger that didn't read the book. So my thing is, uh, it just becomes a popular keyword that everybody was probably the, the most used word on the internet. Atlas Shrug was, mm -hmm. and so, uh, and, I, and I, kept saying, right? I kept saying her name was Ayn Rand. <laughs> Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand. So then bloggers are like, this idiot doesn't even know how to say her name. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, if anybody really wants to know about her, right. Just Google her on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you'll get who she was. She does an interview with Mike Wallace mm -hmm. and Phil Donahue, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's what I love about YouTube. If you really want to know, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to know about Maharishi. Mm -hmm. I think he's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody you want to know about, you don't have to Google and read the text part. Just they, there's enough video now right. to, to check out the teachings. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So. It's everywhere. I mean, that's that's another self-responsibility thing. I mean, I wanted to know about you. I didn't mm -hmm. Google you. I went and looked at your video. Mm -hmm. I just I was looking at your mm -hmm. interviews and going, oh, cool. Yeah. And that's, you know, the videos are probably as the best, closest thing to what you just did. Because mm -hmm. you just did it. Yeah. And then you're writing. But I don't, you know, I just found it. Yeah, you just, well, you know, we just, uh, the videos are amazing. That's always, you know, I'm obviously into, into the web stuff. So I think it's important to, if you want your voice heard, you can always, you know, pick up a camera. And that's one way to do it. A lot of people, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of emails, a lot of things going on in the mm -hmm. web. Lots and lots of stuff, so. And now, uh, the way show are movies on iTunes. It's going to be on March 8th. Eight. March 8th. Eight. Right. And free Spiritual tickets. Wars is also free on iTunes. I was going to ask that about free tickets, because I, I mean, that's one of the things, because I'm going to do an after the show blog, um, and this is going to air early. So and by the way, in this case, I will say to the bloggers, mm -hmm. you can talk whatever you want mm -hmm. about us. Good or bad, we need some reviews. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna review. I'm going to yes. premiere. And I'm gonna review it. And I'm hoping that I, I'll buy the bloggers that want to attack me some cookies or mm -hmm. hook you up with some girls. <laughs> Come to the screen. You know, mm -hmm. get get familiar with. Check us out before you throw us under the bus. Right. That's what I want. Well, there's that. <clears throat> there's free tickets because it's a free screen. It's right? a free screen. Premieres okay. are generally free. Okay. And we, we would love people, we don't you want, have... You want people to be there, yeah, right? That we don't have the machine of the studios mm -hmm. where they they get people to mm -hmm. go. Um, we don't, so we want people, you know, we mm -hmm. ask you, we ask others to, you know, and we don't want just anybody to go. We want people that are interested in mm -hmm. this kind of movie to go. We don't want to, you know, right. I don't know... Uh, if you're, if you're looking for a particular... Scandinavian pirating online. I don't need right. those people. <laughs> yeah, you know. Right. Well, that's. I think that's really important to know. So I'll, they have the show blog. I'm going to have all those links. Yeah, the like Links to people. all the, the tickets, the, you know, where they can find out about um, you, particularly you where you can find out about the sh movie. Yeah, if you go to thewayshower.com, mm -hmm. I think you can print your ticket. Just please uh, mm -hmm. print your ticket. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can go to the Facebook, The Way Shower Movie. Mm -hmm. But check out The Way Shower. Some people go shower. Mm -hmm. Thewayshower.com. The <laughs> Just click the ticket. It'll be there for you to... Mm -hmm. 
think it's on the event page and hit mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah, that, those will all be all part of this, though, as, as, the, as we go out. Okay, great. Um, it, it'll be everything, you know, and I'll be just constantly talking about it on all my She's awesome. things because I'm a champion of, of the work, and I'm excited to see the film. So it's and really we're, work, we're working on the Way Shore documentary on John yeah. Rogers, and that's going to be, uh, um, that'll be about a year maybe. But it's fun to, mm -hmm. to dig up old stuff. I've only been with him for 25, four years. So, I mean, he's been around since 63 doing right. this. So that's been well, great. people want to come early, though. Oh, yes. Play because, you know, I read that there's something going on. Yes. I've, uh, as well before, like all day, like from 9 to 6 or something. Like JR and I created, uh, using the iPad technology, mm -hmm. load up all the seminars that he has, as many as we can. And we go JR, JR Marathon, we just basically play his seminars of the past, or mm -hmm. he doesn't speak much now, you know, he retired, but John Morton uh, took over. But basically, um, we play John Rogers stuff from when he was first recorded on. Uh, because it's about six, seven hours, we probably can only do about four or five mm -hmm. hours. And we do moments of peace. Mm -hmm. There are these little two minute vignette stories of when he travels to different locations. He's done about 210 of those. Mm -hmm. And you're hosting? I'm hosting. I'm like DJing on yeah. the iPad. It's kind great, of cool. great, great, great. And it's it's a, a thing that we we came upon. We created. Jr. helped me. Mm -hmm. Zoe and basically we started at. Uh, I loved it at the Castro Theater in San Francisco. <clears throat> Huge theater. And we were screening the wish over that night. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to do this marathon idea, just be engrossed in the loving energy, kind of like. <clears throat> it's kind of like. Beatnik in the 60s, it's all poetry all day mm. with coffee, or you know, it's kind of like we don't have, we, you don't necessarily have to be there inside watching. Mm. You can be outside having popcorn, hanging out. The more we love networking, when, yes. when two or more gather, right. you know, I'm there too. That's what Jesus said. So basically, mm -hmm. that's the idea we like to create. When a, a lot of us get together in fellowship, it's fun. Right, so you can make a day of it then. And it's a day of hanging around. Yeah, a, a day, and then top it, you know, like top it all off. Top it off. Maybe a little thirty-foot red carpet because mm -hmm. we don't want to go into the city. Mm -hmm. Thirty-foot red carpet. Yeah. It's cheaper. A little step mm -hmm. and repeat. Mm-hmm. Get behind things, just photos. Bring day. some stars. Mm -hmm. I am a, you know, a star, uh, thingy. I need some stars. I need some paparazzi. Mm -hmm. I got paparazzi friends, so I'm calling them. Oh well, great. Well, you you have, I think, pretty much a good part of the cast will be there so I read and that's very exciting so I'm looking forward to it and I thank you very much for sitting down thank with you me so much I'm, it's so nice to meet you and spend time with you and, thank and, you um, and Zoe over on on the side here we're gonna get a picture of her and, and, and Jesus together so I can uh, you're you way shower dot com I am the way shower no I am no, what's your way it is way shower dot com huh way shower dot that's what way shower dot com it's and on I'm the way shower .com. yes that's right. Go to both our sites. So you won't, you, everybody who watches my stuff. Well, or know. email Zoe at <laughs> Zoe at Z O E at M S I dot org for the mm -hmm. tickets. Yeah. Or link offer. Yeah, we'll, we'll all have them. If anybody who knows me will, you, I'll be like, read it, you know, check it out. So thank you very much for being thank here. You. That's exciting. All right, great. <laughs>